Today on City Beat, harnessing the power of nature, Dutch artist Bernard Smiled controls the weather at his Shanghai exhibition. Then we're off to New York's Central Park for the Columbus Circle Holiday Market. Then let's head west to LA and see what's up at the Pink Media Center. Hello and welcome to City Beach, where we have the latest in art, culture, entertainment, fashion, and lifestyle. Every Monday, we go from Shanghai to New York and Los Angeles to bring you some of the coolest stuff from around the world. You can always scan our QR code or check our official WeChat account for all your City Beat updates. I'm your host, Lisa Jones. Dutch artist Bernard Smiled harnessed the natural forces for his debut exhibition in Shanghai. For the opening, the artist actually creates a cloud in a controlled environment in a fascinating display of both art and nature. My grandparents had an old seascape painting and I used to like that image a lot. It was not that, not that big either, it was just a small painting with an old, old ship going into a really dark sea. And I think there was a storm coming up or something like that, or it just cleared out, you don't know. And that, yeah, I really like that. That's also what I like about clouds is that it's ungraspable. He is Bernat Smiled, a Dutch artist who rose to fame for actually creating a cloud. Generally, people use dry ice to create clouds, which is actually smoke. But Bernard Smile uses his own secret way to create these feats of climatology. And his clouds stay formed for half an hour. The only tip he would give us is that the water he uses is the most important part. He and his famous cloud have been warmly welcomed by people all around the world. I'm really interested in work that kind of exists in between reality and representation in a way that it doesn't really function in the end. So as for the clouds, they're just there, they're building up, but at the same time they're falling apart. So afterwards there's really well, this document of something that happened on a specific location, that's what counts the idea of a cloud inside a space and the meanings people project on it. Clouds can symbolize many things. So they can be something ominous maybe. Yeah, they can also mean bad luck or they can mean so many things depending on the situation. Having studied fine arts in the Netherlands, Smiled settled in the capital Amsterdam. He established his practice and conceived artwork that had a delicate demeanor. Almost transparent in their simplicity, the artist calculated cloud photographs and inventive sculptures appear determined by a more ephemeral belief system that settles upon society like the intangible nuances that shape the weather. So it's supposed to be, yeah, lots of the work is supposed to be about an attempt of uh, reaching an ideal, an ideal status as for the landscape and also for the idea of a rainbow and the clouds. Even, even the facades there, the wedding photography, it's always, it's always about this ideal, but then you realize it's not, you cannot really reach it. So also like the beauty, it's just beyond that, it's falling apart. So this idea of ideal and also um, the temporality is kind of always together, you know? And uh, I work on that, that boundary that I find interesting. 
Recently, he brought his work to Shanghai and held his first solo exhibition at the Bodhian Arts Center. The name of the exhibition is False Permanent. Touch Bernard has brought his cloud and his new rainbow to many places like New York City, Paris, and now Shanghai. Um, I'm kind of projecting the appearance of a rainbow onto the building. And um, what I've been trying to do, um, well, for some um, beginning of this year, I was kind of working on how to. Uh, how to break light in order to produce a rainbow onto a surrounding. And so we developed uh, a big prism. And what it does actually, a prism um, breaks light into a color spectrum. So we have a very big prism and we use two big lights to project the rainbow. And what I really like about a prism is that it shows us very directly on how we perceive our surrounding and colors. Because everything we see is kind of because of the breaking of light. And uh, that's what I find really interesting. Bernard Smile has already taken a unique approach to his art, and he doesn't show any signs of slowing down. So next time, maybe you'll find a twinkling star in your roof, or perhaps a meteor shower raining down in your neighbor's wall. But harnessing the power of nature, he gives us a cool look at how the world around us may just be a spectacular display of art. Now it's time for a quick break, but when we return, we'll head to New York's Columbus Circle Holiday Market in Central Park. Coming up next, then we're off to New York's Central Park for the Columbus Circle Holiday Market. York's historic Central Park, the Columbus Circle Holiday Market, is the perfect place to enjoy bits and bites from the city's finest shops. From art to design, it's all about holiday gifts while enjoy winter in New York City. I'm feeling really in the holiday spirit and to totally enjoy it, I've got to get some great gifts for my friends and family. I'm here at Columbus Circle, let's go shopping. Artisans and designers from around the area gathered to sell their unique products, making it a one-stop shop for holiday shoppers. First, I check out how to give the gift of New York to the next generation. Little New Yorker is a collective of local artists and we have kid stuff. This is our fifth year here and um, a lot of visitors, of course, from all over the world will will come to Central Park or to, to other attractions around here and so we have we have customers from all over the world. Do you feel any competition with the other vendors who are selling kids stuff? And Not at all, not at all. We, we think of all these vendors as, as friends and colleagues uh, and while there's the occasional vendor who, who may be considered competition, we feel that we have enough unique things and hopefully they have enough unique things that, that all of us will make our customers happy. When it comes to giving the gift of New York, you can't forget about all of its inhabitants, even some of the more unpopular ones, like bugs, squirrels, and rats. Cutest cockroach you will ever see. <laughs> no doubt about it. 
So I have checked out a bunch of the items that they have here at Little New Yorker and I'm absolutely loving these sets. They come in this adorable packaging that you put fruits or vegetables in. And I'm liking this one, Iconic New York. It's the dove and rat one. I'm gonna grab this for my friend. She just had a baby and she doesn't live in New York, but I think that baby will definitely be recognized as a New Yorker. The city can get pretty cold during the holiday season, so I'm on a mission to find some gifts that warm the body and heart. So you're basically giving the gift of warmth this holiday season, especially here at Pook, and I'm joined by Patrick. Nice to see you. You as well, Christy. Hello. Hello. So tell me what you guys are selling here. Warmth. Joy. Sock love from Canada. Canada's warmest mittens here in Manhattan for the first time. Good stuff. And so what made you choose Columbus Circle as your destination to sell? That's the park, right? It's beautiful. It's very holiday, a lot of festival cheer going on. Trump Tower across the way, the Donald. I like to style my hat like him. You know, that's the double Donald Trump comb over. That is fantastic. Yeah, it's actually an infinite number of possibilities. Whoa. That's the style guide that comes with the hat. I decide to pook around the booth and look for something to satisfy my inner Canadian. And here we have it. How do I look? I think I have found the perfect gift for my friend. She is always cold all the time. So I think this hat will be great. It's got the little pink touch, so she'll feel nice and feminine and very sexy at the same time. This is coming on with me. During the holidays, it's especially important to remember to be kind and giving. At Posey Poems, they're selling art that exudes positivity all year round. They're moving poetry, so as they turn, there's different words on the other side, so they can be read in many different ways. They make a lovely gift because they're uh, positive messages, so it's something really sweet to give to a family member or friend who's looking for a little something uplifting. So there are so many gifts that people can buy this year at big department stores. Why do you think that this is a great spot to do at Columbus Circle Market? I think it's a great spot because there's so many unique vendors that you probably won't find in like a general brick and mortar shop. So there's lots of unique things, lots of unique people. You can customize the poem by writing on the top chalk piece or create your own poem like I did using the happy word blocks. I've been searching high and low for a gift for my mom and I want something that really stands out and I'm loving this poem right here. It has all the great adjectives that I think describe her. Smart, captivating, extraordinary and there's extra ones on the side uh, as well. So I'm gonna snag this one. It's just a gift that keeps on giving knowing that her daughter loves her. So Amanda, I'll take that one please and thank you. Sure thing. After shopping around the market, it's easy to see why it's a magical place. With the variety of shopping options at your fingertips, along with the beautiful Columbus Circle background, you're sure to leave with a full heart and an empty wallet. I have shopped all around the market. I'm definitely not leaving empty handed. I can't wait to give these to my friends and family. I think they're gonna love it because it really is a piece of New York. Happy holidays, everyone. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens. Now let's head to LA and see what's happening at the Palais Media Center. Director of Programming of Paley Center, Renee Rius. How so are you doing today? I'm terrific. It's so great to have you here. Nice to meet you. What's the founding story of Paley Center? Well, you know, we've always seen the Paley Center. If, if you love television, we've always seen the Paley Center mm -hmm. as, like, you should think of it as a second home. Mm -hmm. And our founder, William S. Paley, who was also the founder of CBS Television, thought of it the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in his offices at CBS back in 1975, the year that we were founded. Mm -hmm. And there was a man going by his office with a crate of tapes and films. And he said, where are you going with that? And uh, the gentleman said, you know, we have to clear out room. So we're just throwing these shows away. And he said, well, you can't do that. And it made him realize that television's history, all these fantastic shows, had to have a place where they could be archived and the public can enjoy them for years and years. So that's how we got started. I see a lot of typewriters here. <laughs> what is this about? Exactly. This is one of the many exhibits that we have throughout the year. This one currently is a collection of typewriters that is uh, from the LA Police Commissioner Steve Soberoff. Now he gathered typewriters that were owned by significant figures in history. 
and we have like right over there you'll see a typewriter that belonged to John Lennon of the Beatles and he wrote the song Imagine on that typewriter. Oh my it's kind of incredible. <laughs> and you also get to see the history of like how typewriters look like. We have this one right here that uh, belonged to one of the great you know film stars Shirley Temple who also she was a child star in the 1930s and also had a television show in the 50s and she had this beautiful little white very stylish typewriter. It looks, it looks kind of modern even for, for today. Button. Exactly. So you can experience that here for free at the Paley Center in Los Angeles. And we also have more exhibits coming up. One um, features Jim Henson's 60th anniversary, the great puppeteer who brought us the Muppets and so many Sesame Street and so many great shows. Paley Fest is our most famous festival and um, every year we host Paley Fest Fall TV Previews where we premiere all the new television shows that are going to be on ABC, CBS, The CW, Fox, and NBC, and Univision throughout the year. Uh, this year we had Ricky Martin here, which was really fun. We had the cast of um, NCIS LA and CSI. So there's great stuff all the year at the Paley Center. This is our, uh, our beautiful, it's called the John H. Mitchell Theater here in Los Angeles, and we host so many live events. We live stream our panels. Sometimes we have 100,000 people watching at the same time. Yeah. But if you're here, you're one of the lucky 150 yeah. to be close to your favorite stars. The latest exhibit in Haiti right now is the Jim Henson's Turkey Hollow Rediscovery Monsters and Magic, which will feature photography, original sketches from the Henson characters, and the actual puppets in the film. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, we'll check out a fascinating fusion of art and fashion at the new exhibition, The Future of Fashion Is Now. A creative combination of art and style, the new exhibition The Future of Fashion is Now is bringing work from 29 designers from 13 different countries. Let's head to the OCAT Gallery for a closer look. Fashion reflects the era. It has now more than ever become a cultural phenomena as fashion turns to art with both influencing each other. It's gone beyond mere garments and conventions and moved to an innovative sphere of ideas and creativity. It's more than a feather of scale of us human beings, but has also become a self-expression rooted in desire. The exhibition, The Future of Fashion is Now, brings together the work of 29 designers from 13 countries, giving the floor to a new generation of designer from all across the world, reshaping our fashion systems. But it's also a Dutch-China collaboration, with both countries exchanging ideas in design and innovation. The interesting thing about the exhibition is that there's a huge diversity. When you walk around here, you see all these different works, but they have two things in common. The first thing is freedom from the restrictions of the fashion industry. The second thing is interconnectedness. Designers are connected to social issues, which you didn't have before. And of course, what is very important with designers is cutting edge technology. Material and fabric are become very important again. And one thing is, of course, that uh, you, people would like to 
develop new kind of fabric by biotech technology or want to implement like smart materials inside the garment to make it like that you get smart garments. Artist Wong Lei doesn't work with fabric at all, but instead with various kinds of paper. In his installation, hand-woven toilet paper, he made a series of garments knitted from toilet paper, turning the paper into thread and discussing concepts of materialism while fostering a public sense of discovery. New technology is also injected into the experience. Dutch artist Pauline van Dagen explores more possibilities in her work The Coat with built-in LED lights and a wearable solar jacket. And this is one of my designs that integrates electronics or specifically solar cells into clothing. So it captures the sunlight, translates it into electricity and uh, it allows you to generate energy through your clothing and you can for instance charge a, a smartphone wherever you go. This is one of my um, latest designs. I'm a runner myself and I was very frustrated with wearing these uh, armbands with light and I thought it could be more beautiful to use light in an aesthetic way so I used uh, LED ribbons combined with prismatic foil and it creates this kind of shimmering light effect and um, it allows runners to be visible at night when they go running. Young generation thinking, but why can it be more playful? Why can't we have more fun? And how can we reshape a human figure? It also can become a comical strip figure or um, a monster or, and that also engage, that's also a way of communicating because yeah, well, of course we communicate with our clothes, but in reshaping the figure, there are a lot of other dimensions to be dive in. While well, Chinese artist Se Chan's collection, Hug Me, is about the disconnection between people and the loneliness that it produces with a humorous tone. The work Knitted Travel Maps from Chinese artist Movana Chen tries to stretch classical notions of beauty, seeking a new definition of the human figure by taking a knitted body container to various city landmarks all around the world, with people passing by and watching. Dutch artist Antoine Peters' work is always based on the modern wardrobe classics like jeans, t-shirts and sweaters. This time he literally made a sweater with the longest sleeves in the world in his work, Long Sleeve. It's called Long Sleeve because the sleeves are more than 130 meters long. And the concept behind it is actually that I play a lot with perception in my work. And for me, the space around the garment is just as important as the garment itself. Uh, actually, it's a translation when a girl is walking into a space and is wearing a beautiful dress. She has the power to capture or enchant the whole space. That's the power of fashion. And with this installation, I make it literally. That is really about trying to get other meaning in a product. For instance, there is a scarf, and the scarf is made by Aliki van der Kruis, the Dutch girl. She puts her scarves on her roof, waiting for the rain, and the rain defines the print of the, of the scarf. And then you get all the details of when, where, and the edge of the scarf. So you know the real story, that the, the print of the scarf is connected to the product. It's about uh, the engaging power or the political or social power of fashion that you really can tell a story and feel this is called our home. So it's about the, the, the rich tradition of China and that you have to note your history to get step in, make the step in the future. But it's also like a, a comfortable home. So it's really engaged with you like art normally does. It's also Chinese classical fabric. She did the research in going back to find all classical fabrics and then she reshapes them and makes them modern. A lot of young designers use their fashion designs also to engage with the public and to tell them uh, cultural stories. The future of fashion now is a curious exhibition fusing the lines between art and fashion. 
pushing both mediums beyond boundaries and expanding our notions of what fashion really means. Be sure to check it out at the OCAT Gallery until February 28, 2016, before the exhibition heads to Shenzhou. Now let's see what else is happening in Shanghai and beyond. Christmas is just around the corner, in the cities embracing the holiday spirit. Recently, the famous writer and gastronomist Ouyang Yinji showed us how to prepare a grand Christmas dinner with a Belgium theme. From Uh Belgian chocolate was of course a must, so Ouyang cooked the chicken with a chocolate sauce, bringing the table a sweeter palate. With Christmas on the way, it's a good time to pick up a few recipes for a nice dinner with family and friends. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show, but join us tomorrow for all the latest in art, culture, fashion, lifestyle and entertainment from across Shanghai. Always remember to scan our QR code and check our official WeChat for all your City Beat updates. I'm your host, Lisa Jill. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. On the next City Beat, we'll get a few simple lessons in flower arrangement from celebrity florist Ellie Lin.